the only country in the Middle East where a Palestinian can't be a doctor, or a businessman, or an engineer is Lebanon. Are you surprised? If you are, you are going to find this video very interesting. As an Israeli, I often get told that my country is guilty of committing genocide against and conducting ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. Now, these are serious accusations. These are two of the worst crimes someone can commit. The thing is that the bigger the crime, the easier it is to debunk it if it is not true. You know it is hard to determine who started a fight in a bar, but if you are accused of causing a bus accident and killing a lot of people, it is relatively easy to prove it if it is true or not. You would probably start with exactly how many have been killed. Numbers are very important when discussing genocide. So let's start with that. In 1948, there were 160,000 Israeli Arabs. Today, there are 2 million Arabs living in Israel. In the Gaza Strip, there were 350,000 inhabitants in 1967. Today, there are 2 million. There were about 600,000 people living in the West Bank in 1967. Today, there are around 3 million. Those don't sound like genocidal numbers to me. If the numbers are rising significantly year after year, the word genocide is perhaps not the best one to describe the situation. The thing is that there is a lot of genocide, ethnic cleansing, apartheid, and discrimination going on in the Middle East. There is so much to cover. The Armenians, the Assyrians, the Coptics, the Kurds, the Yazidis, the Zaraustrians, the Balak, the Jews, the Christians. I will start with the Christians because it is happening right now all over the Middle East and the world is staying silent about it. There used to be a lot of different Christian groups in the Middle East. It makes sense as Christianity started here. Some of the Christian groups, like the Assyrians, still speak and pray in Aramaic, which is the language Jesus spoke. All of these persecuted denominations are ancient communities dating back to before the Muslim conquest of the Middle East in the 7th century. The first genocide in the 20th century in the Middle East was of the Armenians, who, by the way, were the first nation to convert to Christianity. The Armenian genocide occurred in World War I, or rather it reached its peak in World War I. It is estimated that a million and a half Armenians were murdered by the Turks. Now, why am I mentioning it? It happened more than a hundred years ago. Well, it set the tone for the persecution of Christians in all of the Middle East. And not only that, the Germans were the allies of the Turks in the war. And a week before the beginning of World War II, Hitler said, our strength consists in our speed and in our brutality. It is a matter of indifference to me what a weak Western European civilization will say about me. Our war aim does not consist of reaching certain lines, but in the physical destruction of the enemy. Only thus shall we gain the living space, Lebensraum, which we need. Who, after all, speaks today of the annihilation of the Armenians? Not confronting evil makes evil stronger. Many countries recognized the Armenian genocide for what it was, and today the Armenians have their own country. What a lot of people don't know is that at the time of the Armenian genocide, there was also the genocide of the Assyrians, which is another ancient Christian group that is still suffering immensely today. In 1915, about 700,000 Assyrians were murdered, and in the last few decades, their numbers in Iraq and Syria have dropped significantly. Under Saddam Hussein, both the Kurds and the Assyrians were murdered and persecuted. When ISIS got hold of large parts of Iraq and Syria, the Assyrians as well as other Christians and non-Christian groups like the Yazidis suffered the most. From a population of about a million and a half just 30 years ago, only about 150,000 Assyrians live in Iraq today. There were about 800,000 in Syria and today there are about 200,000. It is true that the numbers vary as there are lots of different subgroups and estimation, 
but the communities of Christians in Iraq and Syria have decreased by about 70-80% in the last few decades. During the days of ISIS, the extermination of Christians in Iraq and Syria was on the news, but I don't recall large demonstrations in support of the Christians, not in the streets of the large European cities, and not in the universities in the US. The persecution of these groups, the Assyrians, the Assyrian Orthodox, the Armenians, and the Yazidis, started way before the Islamic State and continue today. Lebanon is an example of a country that the Islamic State didn't get a foothold in, and yet the numbers of Christians is dropping. Lebanon was the only country in the Middle East to have a Christian majority. Christians constituted 60% of the population 60 years ago, and when Christians were in the majority, Lebanon was flourishing. It was the pearl of the Middle East. But once the Christians started to immigrate due to violence and harassment from the Muslims, the country started to go downhill. As the numbers of Christians drop, and today about 30% of the population is Christians, the economic situation deteriorated. I haven't said anything yet about the ethnic cleansing of Jews in the Middle East, but I think that the overall picture is crystal clear. Where you have Jewish and Christian communities, you see progress and economic success. Once those communities suffer and live, you see violence and economic depression. It can hardly be a coincidence. Lebanon is also a great example of the fact that pro-Palestinians are only pro-Palestinians when they can blame Israel. Otherwise, they don't really care. L let me explain. Like all countries in the Middle East, Lebanon was established in the 40s, in 1943, Syria and Jordan in 1946, and Israel in 1948. As the countries were established, there was a movement of populations because of war and for economic reasons. This was not unique to the Middle East. In the 1940s, in Eastern Europe and Asia, Tens of millions of people moved to newly established countries. However, the Arabs of Palestine who migrated to Lebanon in 1948 didn't get Lebanese citizenship. They can't buy land and, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they aren't allowed to work in many professions. Just think how crazy that is. Are there any people in your country Britain, India, Wisconsin, Australia, that have been there for 80 years, three generations, but are not citizens? If Israel were to say that Arabs couldn't be doctors, men, the whole world would accuse us of apartheid and discrimination. But when the Lebanese place harsh restriction upon the great grandsons of migrants from mandatory Palestine, the pro-Palestinians have nothing to say. The Arab world is silent. Here is another example of ethnic cleansing in the Middle East. In 1991, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. 400,000 Palestinians were living in Kuwait, and many of them supported Saddam Hussein. What did Kuwaits do after the war? Ethnic cleansing. They kicked out 400,000 Palestinians. Where were all the pro-Palestinian activists at the time? probably at an anti-Israel rally because no one cared about them, not in the 90s and not at any other time. More Palestinians have been deported and killed by Arabs in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Kuwait than by Israel, but you don't hear too much about these incidents. Back to the Christians. In Israel, as in many other countries, Christian Arabs are disappearing. In Nazareth, Christians were in the majority, and today their percentage is shrinking, and they only make up 25% of the total. In Bethlehem, which was also a Christian city, they only total 20% today. Now, I know that this video is packed with information, and there is a lot more to come, but I want to provide you with a small but extremely important example of what Christians are going through. The old city of Jerusalem is home to the most important church in the world, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. In it, you will find the site of the execution, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Fairly important, then. 
in front of the church is a mosque. And on the mosque, there is a sign that says that Jesus is a slave to Allah. It is in English, so all the pilgrims can see it and understand it. And this is not some piece of graffiti sprayed, painted by a kid. This is a message to Christians from the Islamic institution. In Nazareth, for many years, there was a sign put up by the Islamic movement that mocked Christians on the way to the Church of the Annunciation. Can you even imagine what would happen if someone put a sign against Muhammad outside an important mosque? No one will be surprised to hear that in Iran there are minorities suffering from discrimination and ethnic cleansing. After all, when you see how the Iranian government treats its own people, it is no wonder minorities are suffering so much. I find it disappointing, but not really surprising, how little media coverage the persecuted groups in Iran receive. People of the Baha'i faith, which is a fairly new religion that started in Iran almost 200 years ago, are being persecuted even though they promote peace, and they are mainly being persecuted for choosing to abandon Islam. The Balak people may be Muslim, but they are Sunni Muslim, and Iran is dominantly Shia, and so they are being persecuted as well. About 2 million Balak people live in Iran. Modern Iran is located where many ancient cultures flourished 5,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, and one of the ancient Iranian religion is Zoroastrianism. This was the main religion in Iran for 1,500 years prior to Islam. Here is a fun fact amid all the not-so-fun fact in this video. Freddie Mercury came from a Zoroastrian family. Back to the sad facts, there are practically no Muslim countries in the Middle East where you won't find examples of genocide or ethnic cleansing in the last few decades. So far, I've mentioned Lebanon, Syria, Kuwait, Turkey, Iraq, and Iran, but there are many more and so far, I haven't even mentioned the group that was almost completely wiped out of the Middle East, the Jews. There is nothing left of huge communities. In Egypt, there was a Jewish community of 85,000. Only three are left. Egypt is also the home of the Coptics, who are ancient Christians. And guess what? They are now fleeing from Egypt. Do you know why? There have been dozens of terror attacks against them. They are being discriminated against at all levels of government. And there is a phenomenon of Muslims kidnapping Coptic girls, forcing them to convert to Islam and selling them as brides. The silence of children organization and women's organization and the so-called human rights organization is astonishing. Can you imagine what would happen if an Israeli kidnapped a 14-year-old Palestinian girl and sold her as the second bride to a rich Arab? Can you imagine the fallout? I've already made a video about the ethnic cleansing of the Jews in some Muslim countries, so just a quick rundown at the numbers. In 1948, in Lebanon, there were 7,000 Jews, and today there are about 60. In Syria, there were about 30,000 Jews, and today there are fewer than 100. In Iraq, there were 150,000 Jews. Today, there are fewer than 10. In Iran, there were more than 100,000 Jews eight years ago. And today, there are only a few thousand left. They live in fear, and they are not allowed to communicate with their relatives outside Iran. These numbers are genocidal numbers. A decrease of 99% indicates a genocide. If in Gaza, the number of people has gone up to seven times what it was in 50 years, then that is not a genocide. I'm not very good at math, and even I know that. The absolutely insane fact is that of all the countries in the Middle East, the only country that has a thriving minority is the one that is accused of genocide the most, Israel. If you were to fall from the sky as a person who belongs to a minority, your best option in the Middle East is to fall as an Arab into Israel. I think all my political videos are important, but this one is especially important, as here I'm focusing on painting the bigger picture, not zooming in on a small one. I'm not discussing what did or didn't happen 76 years ago to 100 Arabs in Dir Yassin, a tiny village on the way to Jerusalem. 
I'm talking about genocide and the persecution of tens of millions of people, Assyrians, Yazidis, Baha'i, Coptic, Syrian Orthodox, and others whose stories are not told in the universities and those voices are not heard in the media. If you agree with me, give this video a like, subscribe, write a comment, and the best thing of all, share it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. As always, I want to thank my supporters. See you next week. Yalla bye.